Hey everybody, uh, this is Doug Woods again. This is the second video in my little series called Hey, I bought my first guitar, so now what? In the last video, we talked about the components of a guitar, uh, the strings, their names uh, that they're associated with, with, which is based off of standard tuning, how to tune your guitar, and, uh, and basically that was it. So now we're going to get into a little bit more. Uh, the very first exercise that I think will give the biggest bang for your buck for a brand new guitarist because there's a lot of things that you've got to uh, address in the very beginning. Coordination, uh, the, uh, the actual muscle movements, learning, um, finger distances, uh, the amount of pressure it takes to fret a note. All that kind of stuff is going to be brand new to you if you are new to guitar. Excuse me. Then there's the other thing, the other hand. Not only do you have to learn proper motion, you also have to gain synchronicity between the two. Your two hands, especially when you start doing lead work or if you're doing fast rhythm work with a lot of chord changes, they have to be in sync. Their timing has to be perfect or you're just going to sound off. I've been playing since I was 20 years old and I still work on drills that focus on my timing and synchronization. Uh, it's just the way it is. Um, I still seem to be zoomed in, way in from the last video. Let me zoom back out. Alright, so now you can see I'm actually holding a, an entire guitar. Um, and let's, so let's go on from there. So like I said, first video, components and how to tune. Now we're going to get into the first uh, lesson. We're going to start at the eighth, well not, excuse me, we're going to start I guess at the seventh fret. Um, that happens to be a B and I'll explain why in a little bit. You're going to play uh, using the tip of your finger, not the very very tip, but basically just the back, maybe an eighth of an inch or whatever from your uh, fingernail. Tip on your tip of your fingers. For most of the playing you're going to do, you're going to use the tips of your fingers. When we get into bar chords and some other stuff, that'll change slightly. Um, but for the most part, you're going to do a lot of playing on the tips of your fingers. Um, so with that tip of your index finger, you're going to go ahead and depress that seventh fret. So you're going to be playing a B. Now it's going to be hard at first because you're not used to the tension and stuff and you may get these buzzing sounds stuff like that work on it until you can get super nice clean sound All right, step one as soon as you get that you're gonna move to your eighth fret with your middle finger and you're gonna play that All right, then you're gonna move to the ninth fret with your ring finger you're going to play that and then the tenth with your pinky now once you can do that with each finger you're going to play it in series and then this is where you get a little bit of right hand work you're starting on those very foundations of coordination between the two hands you're going to use a down up down up down up or what we call alternate picking method so you're going to start on the seventh fret that B note and you're going to do a downstroke. When you go to the ninth with your middle finger, you'll play it with an upstroke. And then downstroke and then upstroke. Okay. So once you can play all of them, then you can move up and down uh, or across the fretboard uh, playing each of those strings so that it can turn into something like this. beginning you're not gonna have a good strict time uh, uh, timing wise because you're gonna be focused on at the mechanics of actually getting those notes fretted once you get this under your belt a little bit we'll introduce trying to work on timing so that not just your left and right hand is coordinated but you'd be coordinated to the band or whatever music you're playing against um, 
and we can introduce things like metrodomes and stuff like that later on once you're playing and you start playing against backing tracks and all kind of fun stuff but you've got to build the foundation first now once you've got this to where you can play up and back on these six strings and you can get a good nice sound especially on these bass string on the low E string move down now we call this down because we're talking about pitch so move down the fretboard to the fifth fret do that series in A you should be if you can do it in B you should probably just almost walk right through it wouldn't take too much um, but it's going to take slightly more pressure because the closer you get to this nut the harder it is to squeeze those strings down once you've got the strength that you can play that fluidly slide up to the third fret do that same exercise in G then from there I would go up one fret at a time if you can do it nice in G go ahead and do it at the second fret at F sharp once you've got that nailed go to the hardest position the hardest position chords or notes that you're going to have to play are here at the first fret they take the most tension the most hand strength to do All right. so that brings in all the when you start concentrating later on on chords or, or runs and uh, solos and stuff and you have to concentrate on your hand strength that's just one extra thing for your brain to think about coordination and all that stuff um, suffer slightly until you pick up that hand strength so if you can build that hand strength in the very beginning it's going to help a lot especially when the, one of the next things we'll work on down the road will be chords uh, whether they are bar chords which I'll teach you or your tra traditional first position chords which many people call cowboy chords if you've already got the uh, requisite hand strength, uh, finger strength to fret those notes properly, you'll get cleaner chords quicker. Um, because the only thing that will be altering your sound will be if your finger is resting on a, on another string in the wrong place or something like that. And I'll explain that uh, later. However, just know that if you build that hand strength now, it's just going to help in the long run. So that's your basic exercise, and that's called this pattern in which we played is called a chromatic scale which basically means or it doesn't basically mean it it is every note in music uh, at least Western music okay there are 12 notes in Western music no more no less everything after that is repetitions in higher octaves or lower octaves those notes um, are a uh, a sharp B C C sharp D D sharp, E, F, F sharp, and then G, and then G sharp. They are also the sharps and flats are in the are the same tone. They have different names, which we'll talk about why that can be in um, in other class, uh, other courses or whatever where I talk about music theory. I can explain all that down the road. There's no reason for the brand new guitarist to exactly know why and how all that happens however an A sharp is also a B flat so basically what the sharp says is I'm going forward tonally one half step from A the flat says I'm going backwards tonally or down a half step from B so an A sharp and a B flat are the same alright that's enough about that kind of theory but just let just know there are 12 notes there are seven natural notes that means they're not sharped or flatted and they are all in the C scale. All the music theory, or modern music theory anyhow, is based on the C scale. Alright, like I just said, C scale has no sharps and flats. So C is, the, or the key of C or the scale of key is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, back to C, which would be one octave higher. So to play that on a guitar will be lesson number three I hope to see you there uh, once again if you like my video go ahead and click like let me know uh, any questions or comments please provide them below um, any of your questions could be what spark um, subsequent videos you know because uh, I don't know you know if there's something I need to cover further because it's been a long time since I was a beginning guitarist I'm trying to, trying to take everything from step one and moving forward and covering over 
uh, or bypassing all the mistakes I made. And this is kind of how I think if I would have learned, I could have saved a lot of time and got uh, a lot pr more proficient a lot sooner. Uh, anyhow, there may be things you want to go in further detail about uh, or questions you have, please hit me up in the comments box. I'll be uh, happy uh, to answer them. And like I said, I hope I see you in the third video. Have a great day.